What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics, and today we got a reaction to the Divine Comedy and their album, Casanova, brought to you by a friend, longtime supporter and patron of the channel, Ian. Just an all-around great guy. Thank you, Ian. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. We couldn't make it without you. If you'd like to check out our Patreon link below or the patron link on the end screen, we would much appreciate it. A lot of cool stuff we can do for you. All right. Ian says, variously considered a Britpop band, a chamber pop band, an orchestral pop band, or even a show tunes band backing a 50s crooner. I have the Divine Comedy in a category with My Life Story and David Devon and his spirit wife. Casanova only went to 48 in the UK charts, but has sold and sold since then, reaching gold status in the UK. And we only have one reaction, a, a separate reaction, like that's on its own, of the Divine Comedy. And that is the song Thrill Seeker that Trey reacted to a while back from one of our patrons, David. So I've got a little background on the band too. The Divine Comedy are a pop band, so we just went with pop band on uh, that kind of puts all that pop description that uh, Ian said. Uh, from Northern Iowa, formed in 1989 and fronted by Neil Hannon. Hannon's been the only constant member of the group, playing in some instances all of the non-orchestral instrument instrumentation except drums. The band has released 12 studio albums. Between 1996 and 1999, nine singles of theirs reached the top 40 in the UK, so definitely some success. We'll get to this album. It's their fourth studio album released in 1996 and was their breakthrough commercial success. Certified gold, as Ian mentioned, in 1997 in the UK. Its central theme is sex, around which all of the songs on the album center, except the dogs and the horses, which is the last song on the album and whose theme is death. Casanova exemplifies the influence of American singer-songwriter Scott Walker. Through a long and sleepless night, shares the same title as a track from Walker's first solo album, while the dogs and the horses is reminiscent of the chamber pop musical style of Walker's first four solo albums. Now, I couldn't find that anywhere. That's just what Wikipedia decided to tell me. So take that with a grain of salt. Two of Casanova songs were originally composed by Hannon as potential theme tunes for the 1995 sitcom Father Ted, which Ian told me is one of the funniest shows of all time. So I need to check that out. Hannon's first attempt was rejected and he reworked it to become a woman of the world. His second attempt was accepted and used as a theme for the series but was later reworked as Songs of Love, eschewing the original's guitar for harpsichord. Casanova featured more musicians than on the band's previous two albums, Liberation and Promenade. But like those two albums, Neil Hannon performed the majority of the instrumental parts of so, with co-producer drummer Darren Allison directing proceedings. All songs on here are written by Neil, except theme from Casanova, which is arranged by Hannon and Jody Talbot, which it's mainly instrumental. And the dogs and the horses are arranged and orchestrated by it. Talbot. All right, lots of musicians on here. We got all kinds of instrumentation on here. If you have never been with us before, the music will not be in the video, but it'll be at a Vimeo link below. So click along and follow along with us. All right, let's go to the album opener. You see it below, Something for the Weekend. Ian says, a joyous gallop of a song after being heavily promoted by Chris Evans. I found who initially heard it at one of his friend's parties on the radio in the UK and went up the charts to number 14. Quite an achievement for a quirky, non-mainstream band. 8.5 out of 10. I found the song itself is about a Lothario who is trying to seduce a woman, but she tricks him by asking him to investigate strange noises in the woodshed. Upon entering, he is knocked unconscious by her accomplices, who then steal his car and money. Go with that first instinct, boys and girls. You see it below. We're actually going to watch a video for this song and for a couple others. Thanks again, Ian. Man, Neil knew better, right? He knew it, but he just did it anyway. Really good video. Tells the story nicely. I don't really got to go into the lyrics, but... Uh, Enjoyed it. A little rich instrumentation there, but Neil's charisma draws you in. He's low-key, yet he kind of draws you in on what's going to happen next. Great scenery in the video, too. Really enjoyed that. I'm not just talking about the girl, but great scenery in that one. So fantastic way to start this album out. Next up, you see it below. Becoming more like Alfie. Ian said, a second banging song. Only went to 27, but a fun movie-inspired track. 8 out of 10. Once again on this one, we're going to watch the video. All right, Becoming More Like Alfie. I don't know who Alfie was, but it says... Uh, it's a 1966 film starring Michael Caine. He plays the title character. A womanizer gradually over the course of the film comes to question his attitudes towards life. And that's kind of how it plays out. The video does a very good job of playing out uh, the lyrics here. And I mean, Neil Hannon's like this attitude, his demeanor, it's the way he carries himself uh, really, really serves these videos well. We're not going to have any videos for a little while, but don't worry. We still got one more coming up, but it's going to be in a little while. All right, next up, we have Middle Class Heroes. Ian says, a wonderful orchestration. An interesting topic for a song. I assume a repost to Lennon's working class hero, tongue in cheek as ever. He gives it a 7 out of 10. Middle Class Heroes, the, the brass and the strings brought something to this. And the brass in the last song, Becoming More Like Alfie, 
was nice as well. I mean, you got some rich arrangements in these songs so far, but uh, just a really good song that kind of breaks down. Like the middle class is upset and they're going to sit here and complain. And that might have been the way it was in the UK in the mid 90s. It's still how it is here in America in 2023 uh, in the US. But, you know, I mean, people complain, but they don't really do anything about it, right? I'm too comfortable to take any real action about it. So I'll just sit here and complain about what I don't have instead of what I do. So I thought a very clever song that unless you were really paying attention to the lyrics, you were just going to kind of vibe with. Except we have In and Out of Paris. Ian says candidate for the weakest song in the album, but not unlistenable. He still gives it a 7 out of 10. In and Out of Paris, which is uh, kind of a paraphrase I read of the final lines from Dickens' A Tale of Two Cities. Of course, he changes it up. I mean, this song is all about sex and there's just no other way around it. And I'll just kind of leave it that. It's fine. And for me, it's just kind of, it's there, man. It's not a bad song. It's not a good song. It's just there. They're not all going to be bangers, right? Next up, we have Charge. Ian says, wonderfully theatrical song. Undoubtedly not about the Crimean War and the Charge of the White Brigade. Something every British person learns about in school with the story of Florence Nightingale. The sexually charged song is great fun, an 8 out of 10. All right, Charge. I mean, the piano and stuff, when that stuff came on, the melody on there was great. And it really uh, kept you engaged. Yes, very theatrical I'm not even really going to go over any of the lyrics just because, I mean, they're definitely, def I mean, it's it's almost not even sexual in innuendo. It is, but uh, it's it's pretty obvious. But I mean, at the at parts of it's got a little bit from the Nutcracker. It's got a little shout out to the sound of music. So he does this in almost all the songs. There's, there's throwouts to literature and different things in there. But uh, that one was a fun one. Next up, we have Songs of Love. Ian says the acoustic version of the song was used as the theme song of the amazing comedy show Father Ted. As a result, it's probably their best known song and one of their best full stop. And it is the most streamed song on the show. A simple acoustic track, but a fine song. The 2020 album Reissue includes a TV theme version. A 9 out of 10. Songs of Love. Definitely different from anything on here. He sounds great, man. Um, you know, nice little melody on here. Kind of draws you in. He's, he's, he's trying to tell you, you know, he's trying to tell this girl or just tell us as, as general in, in the general, uh, the general audience that he's not like the other guys. He's describing the other guys running around. So, I mean, it's teenage guys, you know, looking for girls, but he's different. He's writing his songs and doing his thing. He's trying to separate himself, but he does, he does say fate doesn't hang on a wrong or right choice. Fortune depends on the tone of your voice. So let's sing while we still can. So enjoy life while you're young and while you still can, you know, while the sun shines high above Wonderful songs of love, beautiful songs of love. So a, a really good song. So we got the Frog Princess. Ian says, wonderfully immoral and fun song. Had moderate chart success, making it to number 15 in the UK. I particularly love the guillotine sound effect. Uh, this is going to be a video. All right, the Frog Princess. I think Neil Hannon's second best vocal performance so far on this album behind the last track, Songs of Love. And frog meaning French princess, as I kind of read this through. He knew she was trouble. And he wasn't going to fall in love with her, but he couldn't help himself. So, you know, he hooked up with her in the course. You don't really love me and I don't really mind because I don't love anybody. That stuff is just a waste of time. Your place or mine. And then later on, it goes south, you know, but how was I to know that just one kiss could turn my frog into a cow? And now I'm rid of her, I must confess, to thinking about what might have been. And I can visualize my frog princess beneath a shining guillotine. And we get the lettuce brought out with the knife in the video. So thought that was a really good song. Next up, we got a woman of the world. Ian says, a fun show tune. Retro, but fun. Doesn't get a ton of listens from me. It's only a 7 out of 10. A woman of the world, some nice instrumentation in there. Yeah, it's one of these that began as one of Neil's attempts to uh, write the theme tune for Father Ted that I talked about at the start. Uh, the woman that's talked about in the song is Holly Golightly from the Truman Compoting novel, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and his film adaptation, which... No, I've never watched that film. I know it's legendary, but I've never watched it. So just kind of talking about her journey there. I like the way the chorus builds. Uh, I'll just give you the first line of each one, but you'll see how it how it kind of develops. Maybe I love her. Then the next part starts. Maybe I hate her. Maybe I'll suffer. Maybe I need her. Maybe I'll kill her. So uh, the way our feelings change and the emotions come in. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a fine song. Next up, we have Through a Long and Sleepless Night. I've had a few of those in my life. Ian says, a foreboding song. There's an interesting structure dealing with a controversial subject, again, tongue-in-cheek. Tongue and cheek. Just as it's getting boring, it ends with a wonderfully and powerful yet hilarious crescendo. Eight out of ten, this is the longest song on the album. Just a wonderfully densely composed song, right? All kinds of stuff through here. And you know, I think he's talking about being dominated by this woman and dressing up and, and doing these different things. But 
the way he builds in it uh it's just it's just fantastic man really good writing as well we do get a, a little Casanova, the title of the album, throw out here. The con man low in esteem, the Casanova in your dreams. I'll scream and scream until I've made myself critically ill in a hospital in case you're there in uniform intensive care. I know you'll be the death of me. What a cool death that would be. I'd rather die than be deprived of wonder bras and thunder thighs. So, uh, yeah, man, that one was really, really well done. So I've got two songs left. we got theme from Casanova now. Ian says you should really listen to this song before all the others, as you will find out. I almost did, but then I'm like, well, I'll just leave it with the album run, but I almost did. It's a brilliant, clever ending and bookend with charming instrumental, perfectly placed, leaves you with a smile. Though it's not really the end. It gives it a seven and a half out of 10. All right, theme from Casanova. It obviously is building the next song. We hear the horse gallop and the dog, the dog and the horses is the next tune and the last tune, but let's not get ahead of ourselves here. I definitely see why Ian said I could have played this first because Neil is just kind of giving a, little overview of the album and then at the, at the end of what his, his talking is, which is very just at the very start of the song. And as we're running a little ahead of schedule, it's just time for one extra item. So I'll leave you the haunting strains of theme from Casanova. So it could have been the first track, but then I think they probably for sequencing thought, you know, we don't want to start the album off this way because, you know, you don't want to lose people. And something uh, for the weekend is such a banger to start it out with. And then it definitely should have been the last song or could have been. So it's interesting they didn't put it first or last in the sequencing. So what did they put last? You may ask yourself. Well, it's right there. The dog and the horses. Another show tune. Ian says a clever song on a topic, which I think few composers could pull off. But Mr. Hannon makes it work with a moving, sentimental, yet thought provoking tune. It should be terrible, but it's not. Seven and a half out of ten. All right. The dogs and the horses. What a fantastic. I, I really enjoyed that song. Totally different, obviously, from the other stuff on here. But, you know, basically... It's, it's giving advice, really fatherly advice uh, to his son that look, you got to enjoy this life where you when you can. And you're going to lose your your animals, like your pets, and some people's pets are are like so so close to their hearts. I remember a family as it is here with uh, with our dog, which is laying right here. He, every time I film, he just loves to come in here. It's I don't know why. I guess he likes the light, but he's right here, my my constant companion. We've had him for years and. I do think about sometimes when he passes and like how devastating that's going to be. So like, I get this and, you know, just enjoy life while you can. And then he, he talks about, but as the curtains close and the last prayers are said, all my dogs and my horses appear around my bed. They have come to say one last goodbye. Goodbye. So a, uh, for an album that has a lot of tongue and cheek and comedy in it, a very serious, serious way to end it out. And he's able to pull that off, which, uh, which tells you, how talented Neil is. Now we're going to get to my favorite tracks. Uh, honorable mention, Through a Long and Sleepless Night. I just like the way that the arrangement took us through all these different styles. Faves, there's quite a bit of them. Something for the Weekend, Becoming More Like Alfie, Songs of Love, The Frog Princess, and this last song, The Dogs and the Horses. All right, before I get to my final thoughts, Ian says, Theatrical Brit Pop at its best, showing off the astounding talents of Neil Hannon. Probably the best Divine Comedy album, though I have a soft spot for the album Regeneration, which is less theatrical and less fun. Neil always pulls one or two top tunes out for every album, but on Casanova, we get a whole album of top draw work. This gets a solid 8 out of 10 from Ian. I'm going to be at a 7.75, man. This album has a lot of songs that I really enjoy. Uh, clever songwriting and just really well done. So thank you to Ian for bringing this one to me. Let me know your favorite tracks below. What else should I check out from the Divine Comedy? Until next time, guys, I will see you.